Hey guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we're going to show you how to create some spooky looking text in Adobe Illustrator. Let's head onto the computer now and get started. Okay, so we're here in Adobe Illustrator and as usual guys, you can download the same template file that we're working from here from the link in the description below. That's a free download and you're welcome to download it and try these techniques out for yourself from home. Now, this is the example of the spooky Halloween text we're going to be creating here. It's very rough and ready. There's not much precision applied to this one as you can see, but it does give quite an effective look for this kind of thing. So over on our right hand artboard, we we just have some simple outlined text here and this style can really apply to any typeface. We've just gone for a bold geometric sans serif font here as it works quite well with these kinds of fonts but you can try this really with anything. So getting started the first thing we want to do is warp this text slightly. So I'm going to do that by going up to effect warp and I want to choose the arc lower option. This is going to create quite an extreme effect potentially it may look different to you by default. I want my horizontal and vertical values to be zero and I just want to create a slightly arced lower section of the text here so we can make this slightly more extreme potentially I'll go to minus eight percent click OK then I'm going to go up to object and expand appearance and that's just going to make sure that our path lines are actually adhering to this effect and I'm just going to skew this text down a bit to give it a little bit more height and another technique that we can do is just elongate the first and last characters here so I'm going to do that with my direct selection tool just grabbing the bottom anchor points of the H and the N here and it's not always going to work that well it depends that's where the font we've used here is going to work slightly better because it's quite sort of straight and angular so just be aware that this isn't going to work well for all typefaces I'm just using my arrow keys to bump this down so it's slightly taller than the rest of the text I think this is okay for this example the N a little bit strange looking but it's okay because we're going to roughen all of this up anyway. With all of the text selected I'm going to grab the wrinkle tool. Now for those of you not familiar with it it can be found underneath the width tool in your left hand toolbar so just click and hold on the width tool and it's down at the bottom here. Now before I start applying this effect I'm actually going to double click on the width tool and we'll get this dialog box popping up and I've already set these settings of an intensity of 10% and the width and height set at 50 pixels. So this works fairly well for the artboard size we set up here but do play about with this you can get different intensities and different looks by changing these settings. But I'm just going to go with this and click OK and all I'm doing here is just clicking along all of the characters here. You don't have to be too precise with this at all. All this is doing really is kind of roughening up the edges of the characters just giving it a slightly more imperfect look. You can already see it's adding a bunch of anchor points and that's really going to help as well when we apply the next effect and this is where this technique can really apply to any font even if it's quite clean and modern looking we can quite easily roughen it up so I'm just gonna go back to my selection tool and if I zoom in you can see now we have rough edged characters it's still not that rough looking so what I'm going to do is select it all again go up to effect distort and transform and then roughen so this is an effect we've used in some previous videos and it does quite a good job of just roughening up the loop of some of your objects. I'm going to go for the smooth option. I'm going to change this to absolute. I'm just going to take the pixel size down a touch here. Maybe go with two pixels. And you can play around with the detail. That's just going to add more roughness to it. Or if I take it down, it's going to smooth it out a little bit more. Go something up around five, maybe. Click OK. And similar to our warp effect, we need to expand this. So go to object, expand appearance. And we've got the kind of basis for our spooky text now. Now you could just leave it as is. This is already doing quite a good job. I'm actually going to select all of this and give it a stroke. Just selecting black again to match. Go into my stroke options and I want to give this a rounded corner and rounded cap and that just that's just going to slightly smooth out some of the jagged edges. And you can see if I add stroke weight that's going to intensify it a bit more. So I'll go with maybe two pixels. Again I'm going to go up to object, expand, click OK and that's just going to outline the stroke. And then with my pathfinder I'm just going to merge all of this together. Okay, so we're ready now to give this a bit more treatment and the way we've created all of these extra drooping bits, the, the blood if you will, 
is just using the pencil tool. So this is a very simple technique and we're just using a mouse as well. It's also worth noting that there's no use of a tablet, although that would make this process potentially even easier, but it's really just what you have at your disposal. So we're just using a mouse. Pencil tool can be found over on the left hand side as well and it'll be under the shaper tool by default. So if you click and hold, you can find it here. Now I'm going to flip my fill to a stroke and I'm going to give this rounded caps and corners again. If I double click on the pencil tool icon, we can actually get the dialog box popping up. And the one to pay attention to here is the fidelity. So we can actually apply smoothness to our paths, which is often a good idea, especially when you're using a mouse. It's just going to smooth out the lines. By default, it will probably be sitting in the middle, which could work quite well for this. I'm going to go for one kind of notch above that. If you go very smooth, it's going to create nice, smooth, flowing lines. But for this kind of look, we want a little bit more roughness involved. So I'm going to click OK. I'm just going to start clicking and dragging out a path that denotes some blood or something drooping down from the letters here. Now you can see this is an example of the smoothing here. So it's kind of automatically smoothed out these lines. Any kind of sharp corners, it's going to make them very sharp instead of rounding them off. So just be aware of that. Sometimes it is worth just trying this a few times. So for this example, I don't think this one's looking that great. So I'll just delete this and go again. And I'm just keeping this really rough. I'm not a particularly good illustrator, but for this example, this is going to work absolutely fine. Because the rest of the text and the look of this is quite rough, it works quite well. So again, just going back to my pencil and I'm just really applying this to any edges of the characters where something could be dripping off it. So, and we can always go back and adjust any of these as well. I'm just going to go for the most obvious areas and then we can go back and add more. And we'll just speed through this process for the rest of the characters, but it's really just applying the same thing to each of them. Okay, so I've done all of the horizontal surfaces and now I'm just going to go back and kind of apply some drips that may be dripping down the sides of the characters as well. This just adds a little bit more to it and just trying to keep this quite subtle. So again, just using the pencil tool, we can just add in all of these areas. I think I'm happy with the amount of detail we've added to this. What we can now do is basically just click and drag over everything with our selection tool and I'm just going to give everything a fill of black and that's going to basically fill in all of our pencil paths that we've just created and you can see we're already getting quite a nice effect from this. If you don't like certain parts of it just go and delete them and redraw them it's very quick to do. All I'm doing now is just checking through this to make sure there are no gaps anywhere so you can see down here the fill isn't joining here and one way to avoid this is actually to once you finish drawing your path is to go back to the start and join it up but I've not done that in this example it's not hugely important so I'm just going to adjust any loose looking lines over here as well but the good thing about this is because this is such a rough look it doesn't have to be perfect it's okay if there are a few kind of misaligning or misjoining parts to it because it just adds to the look we're creating here okay so I think that will do so what I'm going to do is again with my selection tool just click and drag over all of this and I just want to expand and all of the strokes that I've created. So with it all selected, I can just go to Object, Expand, make sure these are both checked and click OK. And then I can just use my Pathfinder tools and use the Unite option. And that's just going to basically merge everything together. So we now just have our outlined text. What I can do is if I unlock my background layer, I'm just going to copy our background we have here across, just holding Option or Alt on the PC and Shift like so. I'll lock this layer up again, go back to our text layer and you can see this is already actually quite an effective look but let's just take this red color so I on my keyboard for the eyedropper tool and we'll grab this red color and this is already looking really nice one thing you can do just to add a little bit more detail like we have on the left hand side is just add some more pencil paths with a darker red so I'm going to flick my fill to a stroke we'll double click our color picker here and we'll just pick a darker red grab my pencil tool and again it's really just the same process of clicking and dragging out some drop shapes here and it just gives it a little bit more detail and increases the effect we're going for. OK, 
Okay, so I think that will do it for this example. Now these lines that we've just created are possibly a bit dark in this example. Maybe we want to make them a bit more subtle. So an easy way to do that is just to select everything and then holding shift, I can deselect our original text here. You can also just group all these together. It just makes them a bit easier to select. And I'll just choose a slightly lighter red here. And I think that's looking good. Now, of course you can take this further and apply more of these lines and effects and shadows and highlights and things. But for this example, this should create some really interesting looking spooky text for you. So hopefully you enjoyed this simple tutorial. If you did, then hit the like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe for more weekly content. If you have any questions at all or would like to see any more examples of customizing text in Adobe Illustrator, do let us know in the comments down below. And if you'd like to know more about our full graphic design course, visit graphicdesignerpro.com. See you next time. Thank you.